Welcome to Live Live! <laughs> 10 minutes and 35 seconds. Good job, Marshall. Thank you, Marshall. I needed that personally, and, uh, and, I, and thank you for the lead-in for my, my message here, because that's how the Holy Spirit works around this place. Randy always knows when it's his week to preach because he's like, okay, well, you let into my sermon, so I'm next. And uh, Today we're going to talk about maintenance mode. So you guys want to know something I'm really, 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 really good at? I am really, 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 really good at losing weight. Want to know something I'm really, 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 really bad at? Keeping weight off. So June of last year, I was 18 pounds lighter than I am right now. And I, let me tell you this, I'm about seven pounds lighter than I was about three months ago. <laughs> no, I just didn't eat as many donuts and pizza. Um, I'm bad at maintaining my gain. I know how to lose weight. I know how to exercise. I know how to diet. I know how to get the weight off. I know how to get to my target. I can get to that target weight, and when I do, I'm like, woohoo, let's go for pizza. Let's celebrate. Come on, Casey's, where are those donuts at? Right? And then it's like, what? That scale can't be right. Why are my jeans tight now, right? I'm, I'm terrible at it. And, and actually, with the support of some guys I work with, they, uh, we, we've got a little contest going. We, we did it last year, and that's why I lost all the weight, because I like winning. Um, and so I won. But the contest this year is lose the weight and then keep it off for a year because we're all pretty bad at maintaining it. So now we restructured our weight loss contest and we have to hit our goal weight by, and actually we've, we've got a goal every month and only one person has ever hit, it, hit the goal. And uh, so we're all kind of falling behind, but we start putting in money for missing our, our goal. And after we hit our goal weight, in July, we have to maintain that for a year. And that's part of the contest. And I think that'll help me because I work with some people who aren't afraid to call me fat, right? Come on, fatty, put that donut down, right? So my question to myself is, you know, I said I'm really good at losing weight, but am I really good at losing weight if I can't keep it off? Right, because it's kind of a, you know, it's, it's kind of like the people that I, I talked to that said, yeah, I can give up cigarettes any time. I've done it 400 times. Not a problem, right? And it's like, I can quit smoking any time I want to. The problem is I just start start again. And I'm the same way, right? I can give up soda. Not forever. I can give it up for, I mean, I gave it up for a year one time. Didn't drink a single soda for a year. And I went on vacation and went, I think I want to get a soda. Wow, that's good. Maybe I'll get two. And that was, what, three years ago? So I have to come to terms with I'm not really good at losing weight because I can't keep it off. I told one of the guys I work with who happens to be um, kind of a boss there, I said, you're not the manager that you think you are. And he said, what do you mean by that? I said, look at your waistline. You're not hitting your goals. We hit our financial goals. We hit our schedules. But we don't hit our weight. Last week we talked about repentance, right? We talked about what it meant to repent. And I'm very disappointed because I got an email this morning from um, Rick Warren. It was about repentance. I'm like, oh, beautiful. And he said, repentance is feeling sorry. And I went, no, it's not. It's not. I'm about ready to go write Rick an e email and say it's not feeling sorry. When we talked about repentance and we said there was three steps in dealing with sin in our lives. And if you remember those steps, it was be sorry was the first one. Repent was the second one and ask for forgiveness was the third. And we talked about repentance of turning course, right? It's kind of like losing weight. I'm going to repent for my donut. I'm going to repent for my pizza. I'm going to turn away and turn towards salad, Right? 
And that's what we talked about in our life, the things that are going on. We need to repent from them. We need to make a change in attitude. Remember I talked about if I want to go to Wendy's and I head towards Wendy's, but I change my mind and want to go to Arby's, I actually have to physically change my direction. Because if I'm sitting at Wendy's wishing I was at Arby's, it doesn't do any good. I could even stand up and say, I am at Arby's. But you can't have curly fries at Wendy's. And that's the theological moment for today. See, not only do we need to be good repenters, but we need to be good re- maintainers, right? Are we really good at changing our direction if we don't stay changed? And, of course, the answer to that is no, right? If I'm not good at losing weight because I can't keep it off, and if people aren't good at quitting smoking because they can't stay quit, we aren't good at changing direction if we don't stay changed. And see, so how does this work? So if we look really deep inside of us, there's this thing called sin, right? And it's red and it's nasty and it's ugly. And slowly we start working on it and that sin kind of goes away and it just becomes white. But then over time, some of our old habits come back and some of our you know, triggers come back and slowly it starts creeping back in until we're right back to where we were. I used this verse last week, Acts 2.38. Peter replied, each of you must repent of your sins and turn to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And that's what Marshall was talking about. That gift is amazing because it's going to be the key to what we're going to do here. Because we know human nature, right? We can get the Holy Spirit in us but and and we can want to do good things. I could go, go to Wendy's and want to be at Arby's and it still does not get me there. Human nature is a terrible thing. One of my favorite verses from Proverbs is, a dog returns to its vomit, so a fool repeats its foolishness. Right? Kind of gross, but unfortunately true. It's human nature to return to our old ways. At least it's foolish human nature to return to our old ways. And it's hard for us to do that on our own, which is why this Holy Spirit thing is so important. Why having Jesus in our life is so important. When we repent, we need to put things in place to make the change permanent, right? When I lose weight, if I go celebrate by having pizza and donuts, that might be good for one day, but Monday morning I better be right back in it. I've got to put things in place to make sure my weight loss sticks. And when we repent from a sin, we need to put things in place to make sure we don't go back there. It's not where God wants us to go, right? God's saying, come with me. Come with me. And you're like, I'm here, but i got a foot back here. And then we just slide back. And see, so I've got a, maybe a solution here. So if we, if we just do the same thing, if we just take our sin that we know, you know, maybe it was in your head last week, maybe it's in your head this morning, and we get to the point where we've repented, we've asked for forgiveness, we need to replace that sin with Christ. Right? We can't leave that sin-shaped hole in ourselves just sitting there empty. We've got to replace it and fill it up with Christ. How do we get Christ in us? Colossians 2.6 says, And now, just as you accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord, you must continue to follow Him. Read that again. Just as you accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord, you must continue to follow Him. How did we accept Christ? By what? Continue. But how did we accept Christ? When you accepted Christ, what was it? It's your word. Faith, right? With faith. We accepted Christ with faith. Right? And with faith, we need to continue to follow Him because if we read that whole verse there, Colossians 2, 6-8, it says, And now just as you accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord, You must continue to follow Him. Let your roots grow down into Him and let your lives be built on Him. Then your faith will grow strong in the truth you were taught and you will overflow with thankfulness. How do we let our roots grow deep? By believing, right? And, you know, how does does a tree get really, really, really deep roots, right? It's, It's looking for something in the earth. It's looking for nutrients looking for food, 
right? They say that if you look at the top of a tree, what's beneath the ground is just as big. Why is that? It keeps it from falling over. It keeps it stable and gives it nourishment. Does that sound a lot like Jesus Christ? Right? It keeps us stable. It gives us nourishment. We need to let our roots grow deep. How do we build on Him? It's the same thing. It's the foundation. We need to turn to Jesus for our nourishment. And then our roots will get stronger. Because I will tell you something. There will be something happen in all of our lives that will shake us to the core. Something will go wrong. Something bad will happen. It may be involving us. It may be involving a family member. It may be involving the whole world. Who knows? Something's going to shake you to the core. And if your roots aren't deep and your foundation is not strong, it's going to be very, very difficult. There may be something coming to each of our lives that the only thing we have left is roots. And the only thing we have left is foundation. If we build our lives on Jesus, we'll have a firm foundation. Well, what does that look like? We need to, we need to make a plan. And I know I get, get this a lot from Christians. It's like, well, I follow the Holy Spirit, so I just go around willy-nilly. I don't make any plans. And that's not biblical. It's not biblical. The Bible says, make your plans, let God guide your steps. Right? You know, we can't run around and say, well, I'm just going to let the Holy Spirit guide me so I don't know what I'm doing today. I'm just going to wake up and see what happens. And what we need to do is, is ask God what our plans need to be and, and then listen to the Holy Spirit for the adjustment. Right? God will give us a plan. He may not give us our 40-year plan. He may not give us our 20-year plan. He may not give us our 20-day plan. He can give you a plan. And I'm telling you, if you don't have a plan, after you repent, it's going to be hard not to go back. And it may have to be extreme, right? If you're doing something and you want to get out of it, and your friends are doing it, and your family's doing it, you may have to tell them bye. I'll be honest with you, when I left DRS the first time, I didn't like the person I was, and I wanted to change. I got an opportunity to go somewhere else and I got an opportunity to walk in there and they didn't know me from Adam and I was able to be a new Steve. Because I was falling into some things that, with my foul mouth and my foul language and my foul attitude and I didn't like it. And it's really hard to stop when you're there. And now that I'm back, there's foul language and foul attitudes and foul mouth all around me, but not from me. And now people say they're sorry when they say that, right? And so we've got to make a plan, right? If we decide whatever that sin is in our life that we want to repent from and we want to ask for forgiveness, we need to ask God, how do we not go back? Because left to our own devices, we will return like a dog to its vomit. And I know that's gross, but so is what we're talking about. We have got to make a plan to get out. And God will help you do it. So I want us to use last week, use what we learned last week with repentance, repentance, right? We said we were going to turn away from whatever it was and turn to God. And so what I want us to do is, is ask God to empty us and fill us with Him. Fill us with Christ. I'm going to read you some words. So come and empty me so that it's you I breathe. I want my life to be only Christ in me. So I will fix my eyes because you're my source of life. I need, to world, I need the world to see that it's Christ in me. That it's Christ in me. That's the words of Jeremy Camp's song, Christ in me. And he's talking about, you know, being the source of life, being the air I breathe, getting deep roots, getting foundations, right? We need to empty whatever that's in us that makes us do those things that we don't want to do anymore. And then we need to fill that up with Jesus somehow, some way. Whether it's music, 
whether it's the Word of God, whether it's coming to Bible study, whether it's starting your own Bible study, whether it's starting your own ministry, whether it's serving in a soup kitchen. You know, maybe you just need to distract yourself in that time that you have problems. Maybe you got problems on Saturday nights and you need to go figure out a way to do something else on Saturday nights. Maybe you got problems on Monday mornings and you need to figure out a way to do that. What I want to do now, the reason I kind of rearrange the order of the service and put the songs last is I want to give you some tips that are going to be in our songs we're going to play today. And if you'll notice, and you keep a keen eye to the, the words, we don't always plan the sermon in the music. And I didn't do it this week either. But they always tell the same story. And so we're going to do walk by faith. And what it says is, if my God is for me, who can be against me? Right? And when we're, when we're trying to figure out how to get past the things in our life we want to get past, just remember, if my God is for me and if your God is for you, who can be against you? We're going to sing in my arms. And it says, clouds will rage in, storms will race in. But God says, you'll be safe in my arms. And we're going to sing Christ in me, and I've already said some of the lyrics, but done with what holds me down, the things I was once chasing after. Throw off these heavy chains that I have let become my master. So now I'm running free into an ocean of mercy unending. Can you see that? If you're you're bound by something this morning and there's something in your heart, I want you to just picture that. Done with what holds me down. Because that's what sin does in our life. It holds us down. Throw off the heavy chains and run into an ocean of mercy. And then we're going to sing, God's not dead. Let, let hope arise and make the darkness hide. My faith is dead and I need a resurrection because faith is the key. Now I'm lost in your freedom. In this world, I'll overcome. We're going to sing, Hello, my name is. And maybe this is you. Hello, my name is defeat. I know you recognize me. Just when you think you can win, I'll drag you right back down again until you've lost all belief. If you've been there, say amen, right? Right? You've been defeated. You've been sucked down. These are the voices. These are the lies. And I have believed them for the very last. And then lift your head, weary sinner. All who strayed and walked away, right? Right here. Unspeakable things you've done. Fix your eyes on the mountain. Let the past be dead and gone. Come all saints and sinners. You can't outrun God. Whatever you've done can't overcome the power of the blood. It's going to be a pretty powerful worship service. Because I want us to feel these words. I want us, when we're singing them, to believe that if you're trying to outrun God, it's not going to happen. If you think you've done something too bad, sorry, you haven't. You haven't. That's no longer an excuse. Whatever you've done can't overcome the power of the blood. doesn't matter. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to pray and I'm going to ask the band to come up. They're going to let me sit in with them today. And uh, when we start to play, I'd like to like to have everybody just worship like you've never worshipped before. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, I come to you today, Lord. And I ask that you help us when we repent to maintain. I ask when you help us to, to walk away from the sin in our lives, that you help keep us away from the sin in our lives, Lord. We know it's difficult, and we know we can't do it without you. Lord, I ask that you touch people's hearts today through, through the music we're going to play. Lord, I ask that the words that we sing... Reach deep down into us. Lord, help us to pull our roots towards Jesus Christ. Help us build our lives on the foundation of Jesus Christ. Help us to put away the things that get in, that, in the way of that. 
We ask all of that in Jesus' precious name. And we're going to need a few seconds for me to get set up, just like everybody else did. So if everyone would stand up.